Hey guys, Gathering Magic back again, and haven't done a content video in quite a while. Uh, just been busy, you know, how it goes with work, family, you know, just a lot of other things going on. So finally got a little bit of time and just wanted to go over some uh, just random thoughts and just some kind of topics that I wanted to get in front of you guys. Uh, some of this, I'm sure, has been stuff that's been talked about before, but just for uh, newer viewers or people that didn't see um, some of the videos that I've posted, you know, a couple, three months ago on some of these topics, I just wanted to bring those up for people that did not know about them. So just some uh, random topics that I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, number one, I just wanted to talk about just a minor thing in the game that's just really overlooked not really focused on just with everything else that's going on in the game with all the focus being on land and that's one of my uh, favorite items in the game are vouchers you guys know i love vouchers um i've been stacking those i continue to do so um let me go into my account i can show you i just picked up a large amount of vouchers just a couple days ago um, they're under three cents i think i bought them at like 2.7 cents something like that so I have managed to pick up, you know, a couple thousand vouchers, so still nowhere near I, where I want to be, but, you know, it's a pretty good start. Um, for me, personally, uh, the only way you can get vouchers is either by having uh, validator nodes or by having SPS staked. And I have up to uh, 24,000, a little over 24,000 SPS right now, but still, that's not even earning me one voucher a day. So it's like, unless you have hundreds of thousands of SPS staked, you're really not getting that many vouchers per day. And, you know, I think at some point in the future, vouchers are going to be used, you know, whenever they come out with the next big promo card. You know, something like Vruz, maybe, where based on how much SPS, you know, you spend a voucher, you can get cards. Um, you know, they talked about uh, Aggie and Weirdbeard in the last, not town hall, but town square. A uh, question was brought up in the chat about, you know, vouchers. Are vouchers going to be used for land? And that's one of the things that I kind of wondered. And Weirdbeard had mentioned that um, they're kicking around a lot of ideas for vouchers being used anywhere in the game where you can burn DEC or DECB. Um, like I said, once land, 1.5 is out, and they have a little bit of uh, spare time to look at other items. This might be something that they look at. Uh, um, at some point, I believe there's going to be a voucher store. I mean, it may not be for another year, but at some point, there's going to be a store where you can either buy in-game items with vouchers, discounts using vouchers, um, maybe even new items using vouchers, uh, all the resources that will be coming out with LAN 1.5. Uh, maybe there's a way that you can eliminate some of the transportation fees or taxes on your uh, on your plots by using a certain amount of vouchers. I mean, there's so much they can do with it. There's so much untapped potential. Just for me personally, the way I feel is, you know, for me, get them now, whether a couple, three cents, at some point in the future, they're gonna be worth a lot more. Um, I did make a video, um, I think maybe about a month ago, if you guys haven't seen it, you can um, uh, check some of my past videos uh, for 10 different uh, uses for vouchers and how to set up like an in-game value for them. So basically what it would be is, let's say for example right now, vouchers are sitting a little bit under three cents. My floor price for the voucher value in game would be 25 cents. So even though you can buy them for under three, in game they basically give you a 25 cent credit. Now as the voucher market price goes up, once it hits 50% of whatever the voucher value is, then whatever the voucher value is in game increases by another 25 cents. So with vouchers being three cents, they're valued in game at 25. Once the market price goes up to 13 cents, so that's a little bit over half of the value, now your voucher value goes from 25 cents to 50. So now you're getting 50 cents worth of value in game where you're only paying, you know, if you're buying them off the market, 13 cents a piece. If you're getting them for free because of um, SPS staking or validator nodes, then basically your vouchers are growing up in value. So it, it's a benefit to those people. And it's a good way for vouchers to kind of get pushed up in price as you're getting more and more uh, value with them in game. 
and there's more uses for them in game that's just going to um, naturally increase the market price so kind of a win-win for everybody there and just kind of a, a random question i wanted to throw out to you guys just to uh get your comments in the chat um which do you think could 10x first do you think vouchers going from let's say three cents to 30 cents is going to happen first or do you think the sps can go from two cents to 20 cents first i think both of these are very attainable targets but just kind of wanted to throw that question out which do you think is going to hit 30 cents first and um, i'll just kind of give you a hint at where i am so right there all right next topic i wanted to talk about our rift watcher packs now if you guys have followed my channel as well, you know I don't think vouchers should ever be burned. I don't think any pack should be burned. But hey, it is what it is. I'm going to use that to my advantage. Um, the way I think packs should be is um, whatever amount of time they want to have them on the market for. You know, if they want to have six months of the main set, three months of a mini set, three months without, what better way to have packs than just say, hey, the release January 1st to June 30th. They're going to be X amount of uh, dollars. I would say three bucks is probably a good price for a pack. Payable in DEC, payable in SPS, payable in vouchers, up to 50%, payable in credits, you know, and, and just let it go like that. Don't put a limit on them because if you say we're going to make three million packs, well, what if they sell out in two months? Okay, then you're kind of screwed. You don't have packs. What if you print 15 million packs? And after six months, 10 million more are left. And then you got to figure out, okay, how are we going to do a pack burn? Um, so I don't think there really should be a limit on the amount. But that being said, um, I just thought about this uh, recently, just in the last day or so. What they could do is kind of set a daily limit in the last month of the sale. So say, for example, Rift Watcher packs, when they first came out, if they wanted to say, hey, these packs are going to be available... Uh, for six months but you can buy as many as you want but on the last month of the sale for rift watchers they're only going to be available 50,000 packs per day you know or 25,000 whatever they want to set the target at that way you're kind of um, putting a sense of urgency out there where it's like hey you know these things are drawing down there's only going to be another 30 days these are going to be available and there's a limit to how many I can buy what if the whales come in and you know want to buy a bunch right at the end i better get mine now so it's it's kind of to help smooth out that uh the sales so that they're not all just selling on the last day so that is i guess one way i would put some sort of a limit on there but other than that i would not put a, a print limit just so you don't have to worry about burning or any of that um but you know just getting back to rift watchers i, I think it's an amazing set very powerful set very good cards um only 3 million packs. I did a video on this when Rift Watchers was first coming out a few months ago. Broke down the numbers of how many cards that you would have um, for commons, rares, and all that. How many gold cards there would be uh, for each level. Um, how many possible bronze max cards there would be. You know, all, the, all those numbers. So if you guys go back in uh, my video history on my channel, you'll be able to, to find my video I did on Rift Watchers. But if you look at this, there's only 3 million packs available. Half of those or more are going to get burnt. You know, they only sold about a million packs before they started burning. So the amount of gold cards in this set is just ridiculously low. I mean, I think it's comparable to Untamed or maybe even Beta. Um, especially when you consider they're going to burn half of them. And, you know, maybe not a lot, but some of these gold cards are going to end up on land. So they're going to be locked up on land as well. Um... At some point, when Rebellion comes out, Untamed's going to rotate out of uh, out of Modern. So now Rift Watchers is going to be meet even more important because now you're going to have to replace some of your uh, cards that used to play in Untamed. You're going to have to find other powerful cards to rotate in. So Rift Watchers is probably going to be what a lot of people are going to want. Um, Rift Watchers has really held its value um, very well, even in the bear market we've had the last few months. I mean, cards on some of those uh, prices on some of those cards have dipped, but if you look at the pack price, even on Hive Engine, it's held at least like 350. Consistently, it seems like it's been between 350 and four dollars. So, those packs have held their value nicely. I think they're a fantastic long-term hold. I mean, if you go to Peak Monsters, let's just go to Peak Monsters, go to Top Holders. Let's look at Rift Watcher packs. 
And then let's also look at Chaos Legion packs. Now granted, there was a ton more Chaos Legion packs. What, five times as many printed? 50 million to 3 million? But if you scroll down and you look, how many people are holding tons and tons? Okay, there's at least 200 people holding at least 2,000 Chaos Legion packs. You look at the top 200, 85. So there are not many people holding, you know, a large amount of Rift Watcher packs. Let's see, where's the first person holding 1,000? So you've got 30 people that are holding 1,000 or more Rift Watcher packs. So that's not very many. So just for me, the way I look at it is, you know, you want to hold what other people aren't holding. You know, you don't want to do what everyone else is doing. You want to kind of go against the crowd in, in some things. And I, I just feel like Rift Watcher packs are just a great long-term hold. Um, not financial advice, but, you know, I, I see those packs going double digits um, in the near future. So that's it for Rift Watcher packs. Amazing set, great set, going to be burned, low print. They're going to be used on land. They're going to be used, you know, and it, it, they're just good, overall good. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about, something I haven't talked about in a long, long time, made this video probably six months ago or longer. And it was just kind of my idea just to add a little bit more fun and variety to the game and opening daily and season rewards was my idea of lock loot chests. Now basically what a lock loot chest is, is it's going to be similar to a card pack. Uh, when you open your daily rewards or season rewards and you see that little chest icon, this icon will be a little bit different. Um, it'll have like a wrap chain around it, you know, locked and all that. So instantly it's recognizable. Um, it would contain five items just like a card pack. and what is in the chest is kind of dependent on the tier, like you would have your bronze, lock loot chest, silver, gold, and all that, but also by what kind of key that you would use to open the chest. So some of the keys you would be able to be, uh, purchase in, uh, in the store online um, on the Splinterland site. So the keys could be sold in either DEC and or vouchers. So this would be another good way to burn a little bit of DEC and to sink a little bit of vouchers. It's like if you want a specific key, you could go ahead and buy the key. Maybe not all the keys are available in the store, uh, but at least a couple of them would be. Um, let me add, because I don't have here listed for an example, your basic skeleton key would be the first key. And that just simply unlocks the chest and you just get um, five items. You know, Two of them would be cards, um, probably one would be SPS, one would be random, and then the fifth one would have a chance at kind of like the jackpot hit. So the first four slots would contain, you know, either your monster cards, merits, SPS, or potions. The last slot can contain any of those, plus you'd have a chance of keys. So you could get maybe one of these rare keys in a chest. Uh, totem fragments, land's coming out soon. They've talked about how in land you would be able to find totem fragments, so why not throw the chance of getting a fragment and a lock loot chest uh, packs so you know hey don't burn all the rift watcher packs don't burn all the chaos legion save some of them to throw in the lock loot chest uh, land resources so pretty soon when land uh, 2.0 comes out whatever that may be you're going to have what over 40 to 50 different types of resources you know from ore stone maybe different types of grain um, different types of food depending on the splinter monster Maybe you could throw a few of those in for one of the slots where it's like you open your loot chest and one of the slots contains 100 grain. You know, everybody's going to need grain, so it'd be nice to get a little bit of grain for free. Now, this wouldn't be a huge amount of grain that's like, oh, no, you can get grain and lock loot chests. That's going to throw off the market. You know, this is going to be lock loot chests to begin with are going to be extremely rare. And the amount of grain in there is not going to be something that's going to break the game. But it would be nice to get, you know, maybe a couple hundred grain. Um, maybe get like 50 wood or, you know, whatever. Just some sort of resources you can get. Maybe an essence, a magical essence you could get in the lock loot chest. Um, extremely rare, like one in 100,000. Maybe you get a chance to get a plot, get a title. Um, and then sometimes if you get a card in your lock loot chest, wouldn't it be cool to get an out-of-print card? Um, even if it's something as simple as like an untamed common, be like, oh, you know, that's different. That's kind of neat. Or maybe a rare from dice, you know, something like that. 
So just, just something to kind of spice up the loot chest where it's not like, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to get one common card. I'm going to get six merits. I'm going to get 0.03 SPS. You know, I'm going to get one alchemy potion. You know, th throw some variety in there. Throw the chance of getting that home run in there. So just thought that that was something that would be cool, kind of fun. Um, and one thing that I think would be really neat with these two is these would be tradable. So if you get a, let's say you're in bronze. You get a lock loot chest. You could be, ooh, maybe I'll put that on the market and see if I can get some uh, some DEC for it, and then I can use that for something else. So lock loot chests would be able to be sold on the market. And the main thing is just to make it more fun, making uh, making it more exciting to open loot chests rather than just the same old thing. And then the last thing I want to add, um, just an idea that I had, and I, I really don't understand why they didn't do this right from the beginning is usually games have a, a player versus environment mode. Most games do. Um, most games are basically player versus the game. You know, you have to beat the game, you have to advance levels, you have to defeat the boss. And then as kind of a side note, or a side feature of the game, you can play player versus player. Like, for example, one of my favorite games is Diablo 2. Played it for years. I very rarely, if ever, play player versus player. The game is mainly player versus environment. So why don't we have that in Splinterlands from the get-go? Um, there's no bots there, obviously, because you're not playing against other people. You're playing against the Splinterlands game. Um, another reason I think a player versus environment mode would be great would be if you're a new player just coming into the game, you don't want to uh, sign up free to play, go to play your first battle, and you play against a bot and you get slaughtered. And then you're like, okay, and then you play your second game and you get beat again in your third game you get beat again and you get discouraged and you leave and you never come back so this would be a better way for new players to play the game um, it would be increasingly level of difficulty so if you're playing a novice um, they would play a very basic uh, deck against you they're not going to scan scan your team to see okay well the player's playing a magic team so we're gonna play you know all anti-magic monsters you know the way that the player versus environment mode would work for Splinterlands is the game would simply look at the rule set what summoners are available and the mana cap and then the Splinterlands program would just randomly pick a team you know and they could set different difficulties where it's like okay maybe if they're playing um, the novice they don't use all their mana or they don't use, you know, six monsters, they only use three. Just something to make it a little bit easier for new players to kind of win their first few games, you know, feel a little bit more confident, say, okay, I can do this. You know, just get more interested in the game. So player versus environment mode, of course, would take a lot of coding, a lot of programming, but I really don't understand why they didn't have this to begin with. Um, and they could have uh, two different types of PvE mode. One would be for the unplayed, unpaid players, the new players. Um, of course, they would not earn any SPS because they're not a paid player. But they would um, earn Soulbound cards, which they're like, hey, cool, you know, I've got this card now that I own. Now, of course, they can unlock it until they become a paid player, but at least they feel like they're earning something. And plus, they have, you know, cards now that they can use in their deck to maybe help them win. So... That could be one type of PvE mode. And then the other PvE mode would be just like the main Splinterlands game. So if you go and you play Splinterlands and you go to battle, you would have three different tabs. You'd have your modern tab, you'd have your wild tab, and then you just have your PvE tab where you would just fight against the Splinterlands game. Um, same type of thing where um, you would earn rewards just like you would in modern or in wild. Uh, but you don't have to worry about playing bots. So for the people that, you know, aren't really into, well, you know, maybe I can play against, you know, my friend or guildmate. You know, maybe I have a chance of playing against somebody I know. There's a lot of players that are like, you know what, I'm sick of bots. I just want to play the game. I want to enjoy it. I don't want to have to worry about bots. If you're playing PvE, there's no bots there. So one thing to help those players. Um... Another way this could encourage uh, new players playing in PvE is, I added this as a final point, uh, maybe when they open their chest, there's an, you know, just a little message at the bottom that says, hey, if you purchased your spell book, you would have also earned, you know, this amount of SPS. So that kind of encourages them, too, to become a paid player because, you know, if they've played a few matches, they've won a few games, they've got a few soulbound cards, 
you know, just kind of remind them on the bottom of the screen or, you know, wherever their rewards are that say, hey, you could have earned some SPS, you know, some actual real crypto if you'd become a paid player. So just kind of a, a subtle hint there, just a little bit of encouragement to, to get them to become a, a paid player, you know. So just some ideas that I had, you know, the main thing, PVE mode. Lock Loot Chess, Rift Watcher Packs, and Vouchers. So this I'm going to call this segment uh, Random Thoughts and Topics Number 1. Um, probably do this from time to time. You know, when I've got a couple hours and just um, able to upload some content, just go through some random ideas, some things going on in the game. You know, I hate just talking about land. Everybody's talked about land and brought up a lot of good points, and everyone's excited about land, but there's so much more to Splinterlands than just land. You know, a lot of things that have been forgotten about kind of pushed to the wayside. So just wanted to bring some of those ideas and some of that content forward. So thanks for always, guys. And like I said, if there's ever any topics or anything that you would like me to cover, please leave those in the comments. Any questions, I will answer those. And um, like I said earlier, I'd love to see your, um, your answer on this question. Which do you think is going to 10x first? Vouchers or SPS? So please leave that in the comments. And... Until next time, remember, stay the course, keep on forging. Take care.